everyone. Welcome to this video on Y11+. Plus. So before we jump into the video, let's talk about what we are going to cover. Uh, we'll start with a basic introduction on what is 11+. Plus. Uh, we'll talk about why uh, should we prepare for it and finally how we should prepare for it. Uh, now the keyword here is we. If you are a parent uh, whose child is undergoing the 11 plus preparation or you've had an older child who's already been through this process, you would understand that this is a this is something the whole family goes through. So that is why the word we is very important. And in this presentation, we'll be looking at uh, the 11 plus from that perspective as a family perspective, how you can support your child uh, do their very best in this examination. So let's start with uh, uh, why I am making this video. So let's uh, talk about that for a minute. Now, uh, a lot of families have a very stressful experience with the 11 plus. And this is very apparent around June, July time, where every year we find certain posts on Facebook where, you know, parents are announcing that, you know, they're dropping out of the 11 plus preparation because unfortunately their child is really stressed out. And, you know, the journey has been very troublesome for the child as well as for the whole family. Now, this is very disheartening to, you know, hear about, uh, especially as a tutor, because, you know, all that's going through your mind is that, you know, maybe if somebody had intervened earlier, uh, this situation would not have arisen, right? So that is one of the reasons I'm making this video. So hopefully, you know, we can remove many of the misconceptions and wrong attitudes toward the 11 plus. And hopefully, you know, it can uh, just set you in the right path and with the right attitude uh, towards 11 plus prep. Now, before we go further, I need to read you a small disclaimer. So please let me just read it uh, as it states here. As an, as an admissions consultant, private tutor, and founder of Oxbridge Institute, I offer insights based on my extensive experience in education. Additionally, as a parent whose child has recently navigated the 11 plus successfully, I share practical advice. Many of my students have achieved admission to the top grammar schools, However, it's essential to note that I am not a child psychologist. Uh, my guidance stems from practical knowledge and observations within the education landscape. So what I mean by this disclaimer is that uh, whatever I'm going to talk to you about today is stemming from my experience as an educator. And I've been in this field for around four years now. Uh, but if your child has certain unique requirements, you know, they have, they have too much anxiety, they have depression or anything like that then you might be worth talking to a child psychologist and then please take this presentation with a pinch of salt. Yeah. So, uh, but let's continue. Now let's talk about what is the 11 plus exam. Now 11 plus is a selective entrance examination for ex uh, entrance into selected secondary schools. Uh, it is used in areas uh, where the UK government has grammar schools and you have selective independent schools, which uh, follow this kind of a testing regime. Typically, the exam is taken by students at the end of year five or at the very beginning of year six. Uh, there are four ma uh, main subject areas, English, maths, verbal reasoning, and nonverbal reasoning. Each school and examination uses a, a subset or a, the complete set out of these four. And uh, uh, examinations might divide these into various sections. For example, English might have a creative writing section or it might not. Uh, Nonverbal reasoning might have spatial reasoning or it might not. So each examination is a little bit different. And I would encourage you to uh, read about the exact examination your child is uh, looking to take and learn about the specific of those examinations. We might do a video later uh, on uh, about the specific examinations and what kind of formats, uh, you know, those examinations have. But the aim of this video is to look at 11 plus from a holistic perspective. And you know, that's what we are going to do in this video. Now let's talk about why 11 plus. So I'm going to present to you two reasons why I think your family should be you know, looking at 11 plus. The first is it's a gateway to grammar schools and selective independent schools. So if your child does not give this examination, then you know, they are not eligible for admission in these grammar schools and these selective schools. So that's probably the first reason. Uh, there are a number of benefits why parents choose grammar schools and these top rated independent schools. Uh, we deal primarily with grammar schools, so that's what I'm going to talk about. But most of these are going to be applicable to top independent schools as well. So some of the top ranked schools in the country fall in this category. 
So, you know, if you want to be eligible for those schools, then you have to consider giving the 11 plus exam. Yeah. Uh, another advantage of these kind of schools is you get an academically focused peer group. What this means is everyone has come through this rigorous uh, uh, testing process. So everyone has a very high academic caliber or at least a very strong inclination towards academics. Yeah. So the parent feedback is that this translates into less disruption in class, more academic focus, and eventually better uh, GCSE and A-level grades and university admissions. Yeah. The final point, which is more relevant to grammar schools is they are like other uh, government schools. They are free to, uh, you know, uh, free in, from an educational point of view. Obviously, this is not true for independent schools, uh, but, you know, some of the independent schools are quite amazing as well. So uh, definitely, you know, this is one of the reason to consider giving the 11 plus exam. The second exam, uh, the second reason is uh, it helps you get re ready for secondary school. Let's understand how this happens. I have a couple of friends, you know, whose child goes to one of the best independent schools and, you know, they still put their child through the 11 plus process, you know, give, uh, studying for it through the mock exams, everything. Although they have no intention of, you know, making that child uh, shift to a grammar school. Now, why do parents do that? Let's understand this in a little more detail. Let's talk about the education system in this country. Uh, we have the primary school system, we have the secondary school system, and then we have the university system. Now, in terms of university, this country has one of the best universities in the world. If you look at the top 10 universities or the top 20 universities globally, a number of UK universities are going to feature in that list. So the university system in this country is absolutely amazing. When we come to the secondary school system, uh, there are some really good schools out there, which are, you know, world renowned. Uh, but, you know, it's not as amazing as the university system. Uh, that's what the parent feedback generally is. And when, when we go even further down the line to primary school system, now, although there are some very bright examples of, you know, primary schools which are doing great, and there is a lot of good emphasis on reading, uh, expressing in this country, uh, in general, primary schools are lacking in terms of English, math, science attainment. Uh, and, you know, this translates into uh, a lot of difficulty when students move from primary school to secondary school. So the jump is actually quite huge. And if you talk to parents whose child goes to secondary school, there are so many more tests. There are so much more homework which is given to children. A lot of children find the transition very difficult. So how 11 plus helps is it helps, you know, narrow down that gap. So if a child has done the 11 plus seriously, what that means is they have a basic le level of attainment in maths and English and logical thinking, which is going to help them in secondary school. And they're already used to this testing regime, you know, which is going to be so much more common in secondary school than it is in primary. This is the reason why a lot of families who don't even intend on, you know, gaining admission into a grammar school still put their child through the 11 plus process. So this process is not only relevant for gaining admission into grammar schools, but also for general uh, academic ability of the children and helping them cope up better in secondary school. So hopefully, guys, I've been able to convince you on some of the important reasons why 11 plus might be good for your family. Now, let's look at the counter argument. Why not? Why 11 plus? Uh, why a lot of families don't opt for 11 plus? A, it's too hard. That is right. It is a very hard examination. And depending where you are, for example, in certain areas of London, etc., the competition is brutal. So it is quite hard. And the children give this examination when they are relatively young. You know, you give this exam when you are 10 years old, or just about 11 years old. So you are, that is a very young age to be giving this kind of exam. That's true. But if you look at what's happening globally, you know, tomorrow your children are going to want a place in their favorite university which is going to be highly competitive. Tomorrow, they are going to want that top level job, which is going to be highly competitive. And they are going to compete from students all across the world, you know, for those jobs and for those university places. So just not giving the examination because it's too hard might not be the right strategy. Now, for example, in a lot of countries, especially in Asia, America, uh, there are places when students have to give an interview and sometimes even a test even for primary school admission. So, you know, I mean, obviously that's not ideal and you know, we're not promoting that, 
But what I'm saying is, uh, you have to compete in the global marketplace tomorrow, and uh, shying away from competition might not be the best strategy. What might work is if we approach it in the right manner and we guide students in the right manner so that they approach it with a good competitive spirit instead of taking too much pressure. I think that is, uh, you know, what we should aim for. Second uh, reason why you know parents uh, don't want to go for it is a fear of failure. We all love our children dearly. And the thought of, you know, them being upset because they could not clear an exam is, you know, very heart-wrenching. I understand that. But as grown-ups, we all understand that, you know, failure is a part of life. How many times, you know, as grown-ups, we might have failed at things, you know, uh, which we wanted. So we all have success stories and we all have failure stories, isn't it? So, you know, this is nothing different. Uh, yes, children are very young, but, you know, uh, we need to let them know that there is a benefit of preparing for the 11 plus, even if they don't clear the grammar school and uh, let them be a part of this competition and failure can teach you as much as success can uh, in my particular case i believe i've got a very good education but my education journey started with a failure as well the first competitive exam i gave i could not clear it uh, but that exam taught me a lot of things and subsequently i uh, did really well in my exams and you know so i value that failure as much as you know i value any of my uh, academic successes so you know there is always a silver lining and uh, yes we are scared of failure but i think we should uh, guide students in the right way and you know not make them be scared of this examination now let's talk about how to prepare for this examination again you know this is a very generic guide uh, and you know depending on the school uh, you are preparing for you might need to get a more uh, in-depth uh, analysis on you know what you need to do but this is at a very overall uh, level so the most important thing is to start the preparation on time now it doesn't mean that you start one year or one and a half years before the exam the learning at home actually starts very early for example even if a child is in year one or two you have this ks1 uh, and ks2 books you know which students can be doing at home there is nothing to do with 11 plus this is just about building uh, you know, adequate aptitude uh, in maths, English, science. So I think you should start uh, with these books early and make sure we are supporting children at home uh, to understand these very basic concepts. Always focus on reading. There is a great emphasis on reading in the, in the early years in this country. So, you know, make sure students are reading storybooks, make sure you get them in the habit of going to libraries and reading a variety of material if possible, you know. Uh, but at the same time, it's really important that they read and they start loving reading because this is going to definitely help them in the 11 plus, uh, you know, when they come of age. The focus 11 uh, plus prep should also start at the right time. Uh, so as a very general guide for most e exams, one year is adequate time for preparation. For example, GL style exams. 1.5 years, possibly if you are in London or some very highly competitive area, and especially if you have exams which have creating, creative writing component to them. So this kind of preparation time is enough uh, for these exams. Don't start the preparation too early. Every year, you know, parents come to me, should we start preparation in year three? Should we start in year two? Just because, you know, it's coming from a very good place. You want to give your child the edge so that, you know, they don't struggle. But the point here is if the education material, let's say is one year long, it takes one year to study and you get that child uh, to spend three years on the same material. By the end of it, they're going to be bored of that material. So I know students, you know, who, who have literally started crying at the mention of a mock exam or at the mention of, you know, doing another maths exercise. And we don't want to reach that stage. So students, it's very important that students should find education fun and they should find this experience fun as well, if possible, you know. It definitely doesn't have to be that stressful and that monotonous. What I would advise is, if you're really concerned about the child early and you want to start the preparation early, go back to the start, focus on uh, reading age-appropriate KS1 and KS2 books, and focus on reading. Uh, I can't stress enough how reading impacts uh, students in 11 plus. St students who have an amazing reading habit they find 11 plus much easier than students who don't. So focus on these fundamentals and I'm sure your children are going to be in a very good position when you actually come to 11 plus prep. Now, 
another thing is to start with the right attitude what do i mean by this appreciate the opportunity which 11 plus exams and grammar schools and top independent schools you know uh, provide to you uh, make use of open days open days are when schools invite parents and children to come to the school and you know to assess the school and see if it's the right fit for them do that and if you can excite the child that this is a school i want to go to believe me 20 to 25% of your task is done it is such a powerful thing you know if the child actually wants to go there and if the child understands why they are doing this 11 plus exercise that is a very powerful uh, motivator uh, you know and a child like this will always get more value of their time than a child who's just going along because the parents are pushing them yeah so make sure you know they start with the right attitude when you are choosing a school don't simply go by the academic rank i know a lot of us do it because you know we don't have perfect information that is why these open days are so important to give you an example uh, my child is currently going to a very good grammar school uh, but when she was preparing for the 11 plus we did look at some 11 plus uh, exams in london and seeing if some of those schools would be a good fit for us for her now some of these schools are highly competitive and you know it's really hard to get in uh now i felt that my daughter would probably not thrive in such a highly competitive environment while she was very academic but she was not extra uh, you know inclined towards academics while one of her friends was so i could clearly see that this girl would really do well in such a environment but my daughter probably wouldn't and you know if you have got a batch of uh, 30 students in a class and if your child is the bottom 5 that's not going to be a good experience for them isn't it so only you can decide how academic your child is and if the school and the competitive environment is suitable for your child that being said some grammar schools are not as competitive as some of the london schools etc uh, so each school is different you need to judge each school on its own merits and then decide which is the right school for you have backup options now recently i talked to a parent uh, and you know who was uh, who had a boy and uh, that child was preparing for qe boys which is one of the top grammar schools in the country for boys and i asked that you know what what other schools are you applying for no he is only applying for qe boys don't have that attitude because you know there is no guarantee that you will get into a particular school so it's always advisable to have a gambit of options and even if let's say location constraints etc only allow you to go for one particular school uh, look at uh, private schools you know if you can afford them or look at lo- good local secondary schools you know which are normal government schools and have those as backup options this is really important not because you know we want to lower our child's expectations but uh, you can tell that if a child understands that this is not the end all and you know you have alternatives then the amount of stress on the child is less and you don't want a very highly stressed child in the final examination so it's always better to have options to have them worked out along with your child so that they understand that you know uh, they are they are able to manage that pressure and that expectation a little bit as parents i would highly recommend that you are in control of your child's learning now a lot of us have students or uh, children who are going to tuition centers etc and that's completely fine but you are the one who should be responsible for your child's learning what this means is let's say a child has a uh, mock exam you should always sit with the child and you know discuss the mock exam look at the questions they got wrong in a very positive environment not with a view of scolding them but with a view of helping them yeah parents and families who do that the children definitely perform better than families who don't now to give you an example uh, we do a lot of doubt sessions over the weekend where you know we go through uh, uh, specific exams and you know we talk through doubts i have a lot of you know friends who whose children are preparing with me so they discuss it with me that you know we sat down with the child and you know we were looking at this together we timed it we did this we did that and that's so nice to un- see you know that families working together parents supporting the children you know in their 11 plus journey and that is what you need to do you are the best tutor for your child you know even if your child goes to a tuition center don't rely that you know i have handed my child to the best tuition center in the world and they are going to take care of my child it is you who need to have the response ultimate responsibility for your child to tell you another experience in this regard we have been doing mock exams for a number of years now 
and unfortunately every year the bottom performing children either they are children who have started the preparation too late or they are children who have been going to one of these big tuition centers for over a year now that is a very shocking kind of a revelation that if a child has been going to a tuition center for one year plus they shouldn't be doing this badly but the problem is a lot of children get lost in the system just because a child is going to a good tuition center is no guarantee that they are going to perform exceptionally well in the exams i think they need the right support environment at home Uh, as well as parents time and effort to make them uh, really do well in these exams yeah so guys with that we are going to come to an end of the presentation i hope you found this useful uh, please do give us feedback uh, you can contact me on sumit at oxbridgeinstitute.co.uk if you have any ideas on what uh, you would like to have a video on what kind of topics should we be talking about uh, please do give us your suggestions and we'll try to make videos on that topic yeah Uh thanks a lot thanks for attending this talk bye